When Kingsman was released earlier this year, it's fair to say it surpassed a lot of expectations and turned out to be one of the best spy movies in recent memory. While some of you already know that the movie is based on Mark Miller and Dave Gibbons' graphic novel The Secret Service, not many people are aware of just how much the source material was altered for the big screen. Today, we're going to take a look at exactly what and how much was changed for Matthew Vaughn's Gentleman Spy film. Kingsman The Secret Service revolves around a secret spy agency where all of its members are given code names in honor of King Arthur's knights, such as Lancelot and Galahad. Harry Hart, aka Galahad, is portrayed by the ever suave Colin Firth, and here we see him take an interest in Gary, aka Eggsy, portrayed by Taron Egerton. Another agent, Lancelot, is killed while attempting to rescue Professor James Arnold, played by the one and only Mark Hamill who has been kidnapped by internet billionaire Richmond Valentine, played by Lawrence Fishburne. Upon finding out about Lancelot's death, each member of the Kingsmen is tasked to bring in a personal recruit to become the new Lancelot. Eggsy is personally recruited by Galahad, but is doubted by his peers for his rough and unconventional upbringing. Meanwhile, Valentine devises a plan to use a SIM card in people's phones to emit a unique frequency that brainwashes those exposed to it to lose control of their thoughts and kill any and everything around them. He sees mankind as a plague to the planet and that politicians will never get the change the world needs to survive its mass pollution. Valentine kills Galahad, Eggsy finds out that Arthur, Michael Caine, is a traitor and tricks him into drinking the poison he intended for Eggsy to consume. Some men just want to watch the world burn. After he dies and with time against him, he teams up with Roxy, aka the new Lancelot, and Merlin, Mark Strong, to foil Valentine's plan and save the world from literally destroying itself. Eggsy and the others manage to save the day, killing Valentine and rescuing various world leaders and hostages who would refuse to cooperate with Valentine initially. Eggsy becomes the new Galahad and inherits Harry's home and possessions. The movie ends with him going back to rescue his mom from her abusive boyfriend, this time after having leveled up quite a bit. The plot for Miller's and Gibbons' story is actually less intricate than the movie would have you believe, and in some people's opinions, even a little weaker than the movie, which is something people like myself would rarely ever say. The Secret Service starts off when an unknown terrorist group kidnap a famous Hollywood actor who's held against his will in a Swiss mountaintop cabin. Which actor is it? Why, it's Mark Hamill, of course, making his appearance in the movie all the sweeter. However, in this story, the Kingsman doesn't actually exist. Instead, Mark Miller and Dave Gibbons opt for their characters being part of regular MI6. The MI6 agent and Hamill try to escape when pursued and jump off the edge of a cliff with a parachute. However, when the parachute opens up too late, they both fall to their very gruesome deaths. Ah! Again, similar to the movie, celebrities and various icons have been going missing from around the world, and this causes a concern for Sir Giles, or Arthur from the movie, the head of MI6. He shares his concerns with Jack London, Galahad, who suddenly gets a phone call from his sister-in-law telling him that her son Gary has been arrested for wrecking a stolen car. That's right, in the comic, Jack is actually Gary's uncle. Well, isn't that convenient for you? Meanwhile, internet billionaire Dr. James Arnold... Wait a sec, James Arnold? Doesn't that sound familiar? Yup, that's right. James Arnold was the name given to Mark Hamill's character in Kingsman but Vaughn instead opted to rename the character Valentine for the movie. Anyway, instead of having the Westboro Baptist Church scene to test his machine out like the movie, Arnold instead tests his mind control frequencies at a wedding in Hawaii, causing the bridesmaids, groomsmen, and everyone present to brutally murder each other. I guess till death do us part came a lot faster than they expected, eh? Jack, meanwhile, sees the potential in Gary and takes him back to the training facility where he's introduced to training coordinator Rupert Greaves. Merlin. Gary then trains for three years to become a secret agent. This part of the story is similar to the movie in terms of the training exercises. Gary is talked down to because of his upbringing and low social status, and this causes him to feel angry, despite performing excellently in almost all of his tests and missions. The story starts to differentiate again a bit when Gary goes back to his old mates and gets arrested again for causing trouble. Uncle Jack gives him another chance to come back, and when Gary agrees, Jack tranquilizes him. Okay, now this next part sort of comes out of nowhere, and I can see why it was changed for the movie, 
Personally, I feel like it breaks up the flow of the story, but you can let me know if you agree with me down in the comments below. Gary wakes up in Columbia where his Uncle Jack has informed him that he has 12 hours to return to British soil or he'll be kicked out of MI6 forever. Gary finds out that his passport and other belongings are apparently being hidden in a mansion of a Colombian drug lord. Gary then storms the drug lord's compound, kills all of his guards, apprehends the drug lord and even uses the drug lord's own private jet to fly back to England and delivers the drug lord to MI6. Gary and Jack team up on a mission together where they head to Con where they believe Dr. Arnold is going to try to abduct Ridley Scott. Jack seduces uh. Arnold's girlfriend to get information of Arnold's plans out from her and in this case it's pretty much identical to the scheme from the movie. However, Gary, who's watching and listening to his uncle's conversation with Arnold's girlfriend, is in horrified when Arnold's henchman Gazelle, who is a black guy in the comic book instead, shoots Jack in the eye, killing him. In a panic, Gary returns to MI6 to tell Greaves about what Arnold is planning. Greaves reveal that he is working with Arnold and gives Gary the chance to join them. Gary refuses and it is Greaves, not Sir Giles, who is tricked into drinking their own poison and dies. Gary recruits his peers and fellow trainees to storm Arnold's lair and stop the satellite from starting the mind control frequency. In this process, they end up freeing a lot of celebrities that were held hostage, including Pierce Brosnan, Patrick Stewart, and David Beckham. Gary avenges his uncle and defeats Gazelle and then shoots Dr. Arnold in the head. The story ends with Gary inheriting a portion of his uncle's estate and Sir Guile briefs him on a mission concerning trouble in Moscow. It's not very often where I would choose the film adaptation over the source material, but in this instance I would have to say that ultimately Kingsman is a better story than The Secret Service. The idea of an order of gentlemanly knights that work on a more discreet level than MI6 or the CIA was really intriguing. I also felt like Furt and Egerton not being related made this relationship more meaningful since what connected them was Gary's father's selfless sacrifice. Another reason why the film may have also turned out better is due to the fact that both the graphic novel and screenplay were being worked on at the same time and independently. Matthew Vaughn and Mark Miller coordinated quite a bit, but Vaughn was free to make changes to the story where he saw fit. He even aged up Samuel L. Jackson's character for the movie so that he would be on even ground with Furt's character and use his idea of what an evil Steve Jobs would be like as inspiration for the character of Valentine. Not to mention that church scene is probably one of the most badass action sequences I've seen in recent memory. So there you have it. Did you prefer the stylistic action of Kingsman or are you more of a fan of the graphic novel? Let me know down in the comments below. Give me a far-fetched theatrical plot any day. Thanks for watching everyone, if you enjoyed this video go ahead and click those like and subscribe buttons down below and also don't forget to follow me on Facebook and Twitter to stay on top of all the latest things and stuff. As always, stay tuned and stay awesome.